You had three seconds, please. OK. Good evening. I'm Councillor Raj Sharma, Mayor of Crowley, and I welcome you to the first Crowley Borough Council full council meeting being held virtually and welcome to members of the press and the public watching this meeting live. Before we start the formal part of the full council, I would like to call for a moment of silence in respect of former councillor and cabinet member, Beryl McCrow, who sadly passed away since the last meeting of the full council. I now call, call for a minute of silence. Thank you. I will now invite those councillors who wish to say a few words on the sad passing of Beryl McCrow. I will take you in the order shown in the order paper and additional, and these will be councillors Pro, Councillor Lamb, Councillor Lanzer, and Councillor Mullins. Councillor Pro. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. This is a particularly sad start to our um, first virtual full council um, meeting. And indeed, it has been over four months, sadly, since uh, former councillor Belle Micro uh, passed away. And we knew that she'd been suffering with illness for some time. And in fact, it was that illness that actually led her to standing down from the council in order to call uh, or have a by-election at the same time as the 2017 general election. So she actually left before um, her term of office had actually was due to, to end. Um, it also it actually comes at a particularly sad time for, for losses from the council as well. Um, Bell sadly died soon after two other former members, um, Howard Bloom and George Oliver. And of course, we as a council have lost two, two existing members in the, in the last year. Today happens to be the first anniversary of the sad passing of Councillor Charles Petz, who um, sadly died um, very early after being um, elected last year, which was a, a huge tragedy. And of course, we, as a council, we still have the vacancy that was created from the sad passing of Councillor Gary Thomas last November as well. So we've lost two existing councillors. Um, Beryl uh, was a councillor who was an en who entered in the, the class of 2004, if I could call it like that, when we had a, a previous um, all out election. And she served very diligently as a member for Gossips Green uh, between 2004 and 2012. And in that time, uh, she was the cabinet member for, for Leisure for, I think, around uh, three years, and she did serve with me in the cabinet at that time. I found Beryl personally to be a very, uh, very dependable and very conscientious um, councillor. And I'll just give a little example of what um, Beryl was like. Um, you know, I'd mentioned that she'd lost her seat in 2012, so yes, she lost it um, to Councillor Mullins, who, who is still with us um, at the elections that year. And after local elections, we often have a planning committee either on the day of the count after the elections or a couple of days afterwards. And uh, members of the public might not know this, but actually councillors who lose their seat at elections are actually councillors until about two or three days after the, the elections. And usually when that happens and that councillor is a member of the planning committee and there's a meeting and they've lost their seat, we don't ever see them. But Beryl was different. You know, Beryl had a, a really good sense of public duty, of public service. And so she was there the day of the count, having just lost her seat. And she was there at the planning committee, taking part and fulfilling her duty as, as a public servant. And for me, that said everything about, about Beryl and what she was um, like. And we didn't actually have to wait that long for Beryl to come back. Um, she came back in, um, I think it was um, 2014. I forget my years right. I'm not entirely sure on that yet. 
Uh, so, so long ago now, but she, she came back again and served for three years as a member for Pound Hill South and Worth until she did step down early, sadly, because of her, her illness, because she felt very much that she wanted to be able to perform the role to the best of her ability. And sadly, her, her illness was, was, was getting in the way in that. But even in, in that time, she was she was very, very helpful for me. She served as group deputy leader and was very supportive as, as, as my group. Um, uh, transitioned into into opposition having been in control of the council and she was a very supportive member in those two or first two or three years after um, the conservative group had, had lost um, control and um, Beryl as a person well I don't think that I'd ever heard anybody ever say anything bad about Beryl she was one of those people that basically everybody liked were whatever party you represented on the on the council and she was she was a lovely lady she was very wise she had a great sense of humour she she sort of knew that she looked like the character of Doc Cotton from um, EastEnders, and she used to actually joke about that. And um, although I haven't watched EastEnders myself for many years, um, I do know of the character. And one, one aspect of the character of Doc Cotton is that she's, she's, very, she's got a great sense of stoicism. And that's actually something that Beryl had as, as well. And she coped with her illness with, with immense uh, bravery all the way through to the end. And uh, she was a credit to this council and a credit to this town. And I know we're all missing her very greatly, and it's a real shame that she's, she's no longer with us. Um, I'm really pleased to be able to pay a little tribute to her tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, much as uh, Duncan has set out, um, Beryl was someone that no one had a bad word to say about, and certainly she was already an established councillor by the time that I first uh, came on the council. Uh, she was very generous to the, the new uh, councillors who came in that year. Certainly those of us who joined the council remember her fondly from that time and the way in which she was willing to not exactly take us under her wing, but share her experience and to talk through the various sort of experiences of being a councillor. Um, and as you talked to her, you, you found that while you had some significant differences in opinion on things, that there was no bad intent towards people or to the community. Uh, it was the kind of political disagreement that deserves to exist as opposed to uh, those which are founded on ill will. And certainly, uh, I know it was a, a shock uh, to many members on my side when she passed, or in terms of sadness. Um, we did speak about it at the time and, and shared uh, sort of our sorrows. But um, we certainly wish her well wherever she is now. Thank you, Landa. Right. Um, th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and, and for the opportunity to pay uh, tribute to Beryl. Beryl was a, uh, a good colleague and, and a friend uh, as well. She served in my cabinet as um, cabinet member for leisure and culture and uh, did a, a great job there. She also served as uh, chair of the uh, licensing uh, committee subsequently. And uh, our sympathies go out to her family and friends. And this, this has been a difficult few months, uh, particularly in the context of uh, people uh, passing away because of the uh, restrictions that have been placed on us remembering them um, and restrictions on the number of people can, who can gather. So I hope that that can be rectified uh, in, in the future so that all of us can pay a, a proper tribute, um, as well as, the, the positions Beryl held on the council. I, might, I, might, I must mention as well, in fact, I sh when she was shadow member, a uh, shadowing um, uh, councillor Mullins, um, she always approached that with a, a high degree of diligence and, and professionalism, even when challenging um, councillor Mullins on the, the merits of the tank uh, in, in Crawley, she did so with great professionalism. And, and I think the word was used earlier was stoicism. And I think um, Chris, Chris appreciated that as well. In terms of a wider role in the community, Beryl was also a governor of the uh, Friends of Holy Trinity School and she was a trustee of Crawley Community Transport. And thinking about some of the, the, the direct, more direct work locally, she was uh, one, of, one of the leading lights calling for the um, uh, repair, if you like, and dredging uh, of Ifield Mill Pond, which of course um, influences and affects several wards of Crawley Borough Council. And we see that lasting legacy uh, that many people um, continue uh, to enjoy. And what was great about that was that even in a time of recession or emerging from recession, we, we threw some money at it to um, enhance our environment. And she was very much uh, behind that. And um, she, she was a person who never really 
sort the limelight, but was always energetic and, and there for her constituents, certainly helping them with decent homes inquiries, for example, and parking inquiries, as we all do. But she was a, a thoroughly um, decent person, well liked, really right across the community. And, um, and we miss her as a colleague and a friend. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam July. Raj? Is it me now? It is, Councillor. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, Raj, your mic is off when you were talking. I didn't get you. Your mic was off. You're absolutely right, Councillor. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, no, I was right. I didn't yourself. like to jump in. I, it seemed impolite. <laughs> <laughs> in this virtual reality, we'll sort of put us right. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for calling me in. Um, the reason that I, I felt that I wanted to say a few words uh, about Beryl is because I, I, although we were competitors in Gossip Screen, fighting one another for the seat, <laughs> I think it might be 2004 when I lost to her, um, she, we, um, we always had a, a, a respect for one another. And she used to talk to me and she said, oh, my husband always votes Labour, you know. So I, I suppose she used to be well used to sort of um, arguments from the Labour side in her life. But... Uh, you know, wherever you went, people always knew her, respected her, and 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 I I learned the same really. Um, she was uh, very easy going, but sort of loved to get away to her horses, and and to work with her horses, and and that was her relaxation. And I and I've said for, for to many people for many years, never make the main thing in your life the only thing in your life. Always have something else to do, and in Beryl's case, it was um, it was horses, and and she she really liked that. I was only speaking to her daughter last night, and um, and I said that I was so sorry that um, we couldn't come to the funeral, uh, but it was just bad timing, and she said she fully understood. She said she had loads and loads of people ringing up saying they would like to have been there, and I'm sure it would have been a very well attended service. So um, rest in peace, Beryl. Um, you you had a good life and you gave a good life. And I hope that the things that we all want to believe in after we pass are true and that you found yours and you rest in peace there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I think all of you have said some very lovely words about a lovely person. And for myself, as a mayor, I would just like to echo each and every one of the words you have said. And I think I especially like the words Councillor Bob Blender said, she was a good friend. And it didn't matter which side of the house you were in, she was always a very friendly person. And like Councillor Mullin said, Beryl dear, rest in peace. Raj, can I just say something very briefly about Beryl? You may. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Beryl, I got to know Beryl quite well actually because we were both patients at the St Luke's Cancer Centre in Guildford and uh, I didn't know uh, how ill she was but uh, in fact I just want to say how brave she was and how courageously she carried her illness. Thank you Councillor Mullen. Uh, pick it. That's quite uh, all right. Guys. Thank you. Uh, okay over to me now. Uh, as this is the first meeting of the full council held virtually, I'm going to run through the process. I think it's very important. This is a meeting being held in public and not a public meeting. There will no verbal questions at time at the council meeting while virtual committee meetings are being held. The public and press can still hear and see the meeting, but public speaking has been suspended and any written questions submitted in advance will be read out as answered during agenda mm -hmm. item nine, which is public question time. There will be no supplementary questions. For any committee meetings held virtually, all voting will be held via a recorded vote taken by a democratic services team member. 
on behalf of the mayor, whereby individual counsel will be asked at the end of the debate to state if they are all for or against, and or if they wish to abstain from the recommendation before them at that time. The exceptions are the approving of the minutes from the previous meeting on any other procedural item or where the item sole recommendation to a committee is to vote, not the report. When asked to speak, please turn your camera on. Unmute yourself and pause for three seconds to allow for the slight time delay in connecting. Let me repeat that. When asked to speak, please turn your camera on, unmute yourself and pause for three seconds to allow for the slight time delay in connection. Before in, I invite each member of the full council to confirm their attendance, I ask that they please ensure their mobile phones are switched off or are on silent. Their backgrounds are on and they are aware of the surrounding so that they are not disturbed during the meeting. This includes having TVs, radios and smart speakers as turned off. As with all virtual meetings, we, we will now take agenda item one, apologies for absence, two, disclosure of interest, and item five, minutes together. Please note on that the minutes of the full council, members are asked to approve the updated version of the minutes contained within the supplementary agenda order paper, which includes the appendices A and B, the minutes. I will ask now the Democratic Service Manager supporting the meeting tonight to, on my behalf, to invite each member of the council to introduce themselves. Over to you, Chris Pedro. Uh, Councillor Liam Askoff, Gossips Green and North East Broadfield. Um, I have no declarations of interest. Um, and I can't approve of me uh, minutes of the meeting because I wasn't there. Councillor Ailings. Councillor Ailing, um, for, uh, Ward Member for Rubush, um, Broadfield North. I have no decla de de um, declaration of interest. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Bel Andrew Belvin. Good evening, Councillor Andrew Belvin, representing Pound Hill South and Worth. I have no additional disclosures of interest and I agree with revised minutes of the previous meeting. Thank you. That's a team Melbourne. Councillor Athena Belbum, Pound Hill North and Forgewood. I have no declarations of interest to declare, and I agree the amended minutes. Brenda Burgess, uh, Brenda Burgess Councillor for Three Bridges and Town Centre. I have no declaration of interest, and I agree the amended minutes. Thank you. Councillor Bob Burgess. Uh, Councillor Bob Burgess, board member for Three Bridges in the Town Centre. I agree the minutes, I have no interests. Thank you. Councillor Barrett. Uh, Councillor Richard Pollock, Councillor North and Forge Wood Ward. Um, I've had a number of declarations of interest which were tabled on the order paper, uh, and I agree the revised minutes of the last meet. Thank you. Councillor Cray. Councillor Duncan Crow, member for Furness Green. I have no uh, declarations of interest and I approve the revised minutes of the previous meeting. Councillor Ede. Councillor Carol Ede for Furness Green. I have no declarations of interest and I approve and I approve the approved agenda for the last meeting. Councillor Farash. Uh, Councillor Rory Fiveash, Rebush and North Broadfield. Uh, no declarations and I approve the updated minutes. 
Councillor Flack. I'm Councillor Flack um, for Southgate Board and I have no declarations of interest and I also approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Councillor Francis Guidra, uh, Ward Councillor for Tilgate. I have no declarations of interest that aren't already contained in the order paper and I approve the minutes. Councillor Julie Hart, Councillor for Ifield and Ifield West. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the amended minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Irvine. Uh, Councillor Ian Irvine, uh, Councillor for Broadfield. Uh, no declarations of interest and I approve the amended minutes. Councillor Jaggard. I'm Kim Jaggard from Maidenbower. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the amended minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Johan. Councillor, Councillor Grinder Johns, uh, member for Northgate and West Green. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Jones. Thank you. I'm Councillor Michael Jones. I'm Councillor for Bush and Broadfield North and I approve the amended minutes. Councillor Lamb. Uh, Councillor Peter Lamb, I'm Councillor for Northgate and West Green. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the amended minutes. Councillor Lanza. Hello, I'm Councillor Bob Lanza, Pound Hill South and Worth. No declarations of interest and I approve <coughs> the minutes. Councillor Lannan. Good evening, I'm Councillor Lannan for Broadfield. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the minutes. Councillor Malik. Thank you, Councillor Shahzad Malik from Langley Green and Tashmore Ward. I do not have any de additional declarations to make and I agree with the amended minutes of the last full council meeting. Thank you. Councillor McElhaney. Uh, Councillor Tom McElhaney, Langley Green and Tushmore Ward. I have no further declarations and I approve the <coughs> last full council. That's McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Kevin McCarthy for Poundhill North and Forge Woods. I have no declarations of interest and I agree with the revised minutes from the previous meeting. Thank you. Councillor Miller Smith. Hi, good evening. Uh, Councillor Jennifer Millar Smith from Maidenbower Ward. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the revised minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Mullins. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, I am Councillor for uh, Gossip Screen and Northeast Broadfield. I have no interests to declare and I agree the minutes of the last meeting as revived. Councillor Mungali. Good evening, I'm Maureen Wagale for Tilgate. I have no declaration of interest to declare and I have and I agree the amended minutes. Councillor Peck. Good evening, my name is Councillor Peck, a uh, member for Maidenbower. Councillor, Councillor I have Peck, no declaration not, of interest. Sorry, Councillor Peck, you're not seeing, we're not seeing you. Uh, one second. We we can see the background. We can't see it. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Apologies. Um, I am Councillor Duncan Peck, uh, ward member for Maidenbower. I have no declaration of interest, and I approve the um, the revised minutes at the last meeting. As a Pendleton. Good evening, Councillor Alison Pendlington, Member for Poundhill South and Worth. I have no declarations of interest and I approve the revised minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Pickett. Uh, hello, I'm Councillor Mike Pickett and uh, I'm the Councillor for Southgate. I have no declarations to make. Councillor Pickett, um, your camera is obviously not working fully. I just want to be clear that um, obviously you can hear and see the meeting. Yes, okay, I can. Just just for clarity's sake, so everyone is aware of it. Councillor Purdy. Yeah, I can't uh, approve, the, I can't agree to the minutes because I wasn't at the last meeting, so uh, I'll remain silent on that point. Councillor Purdy. Good evening, Councillor Jonathan Purdy, representing Three Bridges in the Town Centre. I have no further interest to declare and I approve the revised minutes of the last meeting. Thank you very much. Councillor Rana. Um, 
good evening, Mr. Councillor Rana of Broadway Ward. I have no declarations of interest and I approve of a meeting held. Thank you. Councillor Sharma. Councillor Ross Sharma, representing Southgate Ward. I have no declaration of interest to say and I approve the revised and updated minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Brenda Smith. Uh, Brenda Smith, Langley Green and Tashmore Ward. Um, I have no declarations of interest and I approve the amended minutes. Councillor Peter Smith. Peter Smith, Ifield and Ifield West Ward. I have no further declarations of interest and I approve the minutes of the last full council meeting. Councillor Sedan. Good evening, Councillor Karen Sudan, Northgate and West Green Ward. No further declarations of interest and I agree the minutes of the last meeting. Councillor Sharma. Thank you. This is to confirm the full council has agreed the update minutes of the meeting of the full council of 26th of February 2020 and are in accurate record. Councillor Sharma, before Councillor Lamb indicating, um, I'm bringing in. Councillor Lamb? Yeah. You're on. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a procedural motion uh, that we suspend the council procedure rules in rela relation to recorded votes enable group block voting to be done due to the technical difficulties involved in voting online, which I think were quite well illustrated in the length of time it's taken us just to approve the minutes with many, many, many more votes to go. Uh, on our part, it will be the group WIP that will be casting the votes on behalf of the Labour group. Is that agreed? Chair, yeah, we need to, we need to seek a seconder to sit for a procedural matter. I second it. Well, Mr. Mayor, if I could come in. Certainly. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Duncan Crow, um, leader of the Conservative Group. Um, yes, I would um, second uh, Councillor Lamb's proposal for this evening. We have just seen how long it's taken just to go round um, all uh, 35 members of the, the council. So I would be second uh, that uh, proposal and, um, and assuming it's passed, uh, which I think we have to go around again to get it passed, I think. Um, Councillor Richard Burr at the Conservative Group will, will be um, casting the votes on behalf of all 17 Conservative uh, Group members. So I, I formally uh, second that proposal for this evening. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, does that mean we have to take a recorded vote now or would, can we do it any other way? Chair, would you like me to come in and clarify the procedure? So on behalf of the Mayor, there's been a procedural motion um, to, to have block voting on behalf of the two groups and to, um, to suspend the council procedure rules, which is a virtual procedure rules over, over recorded voting. Um, there's been, it's been moved and seconded, therefore um, um, a recorded vote is required for this to take place. Uh, on, on, and if uh, Councillor Sharma is okay with this, we'll, we'll start a recorded vote now. I'll just- Certainly, I'll screen. leave it to you, Chris. Thank you. Um, that being said, I will bring Councillor Ashcroft, who is the first on the recorded vote. Um, and just to be clear, this is to vote to um, to um, suspend the council procedure rules over um, recorded votes and to bring in block voting for the, the two groups with the whips to do the uh, votes on the group's behalf. So Councillor Ashcroft. At uh, four. Councillor Marion Ailings. Four. Councillor Andrew Belbin. <coughs> Sorry, Four. Tam, bear with me. Sorry, Councillor Be Tina Belbin, you're on first. Councillor Tina Belbin. No, sir. Four. And now, Councillor Be Andrew Belbin. Apologies for that. No problem, Chris. Four. Councillor Brenda Burgess. Four. You're on screen now, Councillor Burgess. Councillor Bob Burgess is four. Thank you. Councillor Richard Barrett. Four. Councillor Crow. Four. Councillor Eid. Four. 
That's a five ash. Uh, abstain. Councillor Flack. Sorry, Councillor Flack, you're muted. <laughs> Apologies, I'm four. <laughs> Councillor Guy Four. That's a Jilly Hart. Four. Councillor Ian Irvine. Four. Councillor Jaggard. Four. Councillor Johans. Four. Councillor Jones. Councillor Jones. You're muted. Councillor Jones. Uh, as your sounds, can you put a thumbs up for four, or thumbs down? Chris, I think I can see him saying yes. A thumbs up. OK, I'll take that. Councillor Lamb. Four. Councillor Lanza. Four. Councillor Ma Council Malik. Four. Councillor McElhaney. Four. Councillor McCarthy. Four. Councillor Lunnan, apologies. <laughs> Thank you. Four. Councillor Miller Smith. Four. Can I ask members who are not voting to turn some ca your cameras off, please? Because um, that's why the feed is going. Councillor Mullins. Four. Councillor Migali. Four. Councillor Peck. Four. Councillor Pennington. Four. Councillor Pickett. Four. Councillor Purdy. Four. Councillor Rana. Four. Councillor Sharma. Four. God, say four. <laughs> Councillor Sharma, sorry, you flashed. Four. Thank you very much. Councillor Brenda Smith. Four. Councillor Peter Smith. Four. And Finally, Councillor Sudan. Abstain. So, Mr. Mayor, yes. on the rec on the recorded vote, it was 33-4 with no uh, no against and two abstentions. Therefore, the motion is carried. The council procedure rules are suspended, and block voting will take place for the two for the two groups with um, the two whips, which I believe is Councillor Lunnan on behalf of the Labour group and Councillor Barrett on behalf of the Conservative group. Each individual member will have the opportunity, they will be asked should they wish to vote individually, but unless they state otherwise, the, the group vote will take place. And now over to you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. I think I appreciate it. I think as uh, you can all see how difficult it is to manage the situation with so many of us. And please follow the rules that please turn your camera off when you're not in there and have your mic muted as well. Thank you. Now, item three, election of the mayor, 2020-2021. Now, onto the election of the mayor for 2020 and 2021 year. But before we elect my successor, I would like 
And I'd like to say a few words on my mayoral year. This has been a most unusual mayoral year for myself. I started my engagement virtually, not virtually at that, but virtually from the next day onwards. And with a big Eid party in the chamber the following week. In fact, that was the last social event in the civic hall before the builders moved in and the next day or so, and we lost the town hall later on. Being a mayor for second time within three years meant I was more at ease from the start and carried on with my, my functions and duties with some flair, I think. Each and every function was a memorable one, but meeting and greeting Prince Charles and Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, on separate occasions was very special for me. Throughout the year, I engaged with a variety of people from different communities, clearly indicating the richness and diversity within Crowley. I was well received by all of the communities and all of, all of my functions were well attended by a cross section of the Crowley residents. After the busy schedule of Christmas, I especially enjoyed attending the 100th birthday of a local resident and reading a message from Her Majesty the Queen to her and her family of five generations who were gathered together at the Apple Tree Pub. It was a treat even for myself. It was so fulfilling and rewarding to see the happiness on the faces of them admiring the grand old matriarch of their family. We made lots of friends, not only in Crowley, but in Surrey, Sussex and London as the guest of the Indian High Commissioner and the MDA Muslim Association. All of our council meetings were at the Charity Center, which meant I truly missed not having the mayor's parlor to host the members and not being able to share the lovely food my dear wife, the mayor's, had provided previously. She being one of the three persons without whom my mayoral year engagements would not have been possible. The other two being Bob Donaldson, our chauffeur and companion, and Haley Thorne, the mayor's PA, and a wonderful person she is. Just as we are planning some wonderful fundraising events with food, music, culture, we were, we were hit by the coronavirus pandemic and all engagements ceased. The mayoral year was extended to 14 months, but the functional year was reduced to nine months. I'm very disappointed for both of my well-deserving charities, namely the Menor Green Community College in Eiffel and the Post Club in Broadfield, for not being able to raise, raise the additional money that those charities events would have been able to do. This is the first full council meeting since 26th of February, some of the other meetings have been virtual meetings. The pandemic has shown that as a human race, how vulnerable we are. I was also saddened to lose two serving members and a member of, and a number of past mayors, although not COVID-19, they will all be missed. Even now, while we are in soft lockdown. The sad, ugly face of racism has once again emerged with the murder of George Floyd. We are reliving the memories of the 60s and the 70s. Black lives matter. In fact, every life matters. There's a fair representation of the BAME community, which is Black, Asian, and minority ethnic community in both sides of the chamber, but we all know that racism is deep rooted and entwined into every area of our society. You remove one layer and find there are several underneath. We owe it to our children and the future generation, the introduction of the history of the empire and the commonwealth as a subject. 
these needs to be taught at every level of schooling as a subject. These need to be taught at every level of schooling for the indigenous community to understand why the blacks, the Asians, and minority ethnic people are in Britain. As I went around applauding the wonderful work of the National Health Service by visiting some care homes and Crowley Hospital, it was resoundingly apparent that the BA, BA ME staff were there in the front line. It is a known fact that the death rate amongst them was, was and is unapproximately high. We collectively need to look at our socio-economic system and structure to see the inequality that exists within it. We all need to stand together under the Crowley campaign against racism slogan of one race, the human race. On a positive note, there is no doubt that our Crowley Borough Council staff has been working very hard during these difficult times to adjust and cope with the situation and the circumstances. They have provided first class surveys to all the residents of Crowley. They deserve all the kudos and applause we can provide. And I feel one among each the staff of Crowley Borough Council for doing a wonderful and marvelous job. Finally, I wish to thank all the residents of Crowley, my colleagues and family for supporting me during the rather unusual year. For me, as always, there is only one Crowley, a unified Crowley. God bless Crowley and keep its residents safe. Thank you. And that is all for me. Thank you for listening to me. Now, back to the business. Now I call for nomination for the Office of Mayor for the municipal year 2020-21. Councillor Croft. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Just um, thanking you for your, your comments there and certainly the comments around supporting our um, and thanking our staff at the council for this time. Um, all members definitely want to be associated uh, with that. Um, it gives me great pleasure, uh, Mr. Mayor, to formally propose uh, my friend and colleague, Councillor Francis Guidera, uh, for Mayor of Crawley for 20, uh, 2021. Um, I will just say a few words in support of that um, uh, nomination. I, I first came across um, Francis back in, I think it was 2003, when I was, when my ward inc incorporated uh, Maidenbower and um, it was actually the, the only time that Francis wasn't living in Crawley when he was living in, in, in America and I, I came across this, uh, this, this, this keyboard warrior on the, on the website uh, that we had for Maidenbower that uh, myself and Henry Smith, long before Henry was an MP, uh, uh, that, that Francis used to keep uh, popping up on and he used to be very, very supportive towards me and Henry and I thought who's this guy, he's, he's, he's great, he's very very helpful. And, um, you know, I use that term keyboard warrior. I'm not sure how much has changed sort of um, since to be uh, quite honest, but uh, that was the first time I came across um, uh, Francis. And then I sort of did, did meet him in person in the years after that on, on occasion. It wasn't really until 2015 when he decided to apply to become a councillor that I, I really um, got to know him uh, very well. And of course, he joined the council in 2015 as councillor for, for Tilgate. And he's now on his second term as a, as a councillor for um, uh, Tillgate. And I know I've sort of, um, in, in the past, I've made some comments to Daniel Council in, in, in the politest way that I can about how, you know, I do feel that when we're um, appointing a mayor, it should be someone who has served a few years on the, on the council. Uh, Francis has now done five years as, as a councillor. He's very well respected in his, in his ward and indeed across the town. He's um, incredibly well known in, in Crawley. Um, I know we are all, all of us, all of us councillors, we, we, we love Crawley. Um, but I don't think I've ever met a councillor who's ever had quite the enthusiasm for our town that, that, that Francis has got. And he, he will bring that enthusiasm to the role of mayor. And in some ways, you might need to just temper it a little bit because that, that enthusiasm is, is, is so great. And in bringing that to the, to the role of mayor, I think he will do a fantastic um, job. 
Um, he, uh, Francis has got many, many, many qualities. He's, he's certainly a very generous person. Um, in 2016, he, he bought me this, this lovely tie that I'm, I'm wearing, tonight, one of my best ties. Uh, that was a gift from, uh, from Francis, just because he'd, he'd seen it and bought it for me. He thought, Duncan might like that tie, and he bought it for me. You know, what, what, a, what a lovely gesture, a kind thing to do. And of course, on, in terms of being a counsellor, Francis is in the next ward to me in Tilgate, but of course, he's also in the area that I represent on West Sussex County Council. So I do have a lot of dealings with Francis. I do get to see how hard he works as a local councillor, but he puts he puts everything into it, and I'm quite sure he put everything into the role of as mayor. And I'm sure he will do a fine job representing this town, representing all of us. And I really know what it will mean to him uh, be, being mayor of Crawley. I know it will be a fantastic honour for him, and I'd be delighted to see him become uh, mayor of Crawley. Albeit, we know this is going to be in the same way, Mr. Mayor, at the end of your, although you haven't an extended uh, year, the end of your, your mayoral year has been somewhat different. It will be a somewhat different um, mayoral year for um, for our next mayor. But um, I know that um, Councillor Guider will, will make the best of it and will we'll make every opportunity that there is to really do, do, do the best for Crawley. Because Crawley, Crawley needs championing right now, quite quite honestly. We've got a lot of challenges ahead. And you know, we'll talk about that a bit later. But in terms of the mayoralty, I know Francis will be will be championing Crawley from, from the rooftop. So I'm absolutely delighted to propose Councillor Fly, Francis Guider. Thank you, Councillor. Is there a seconder? Migali on mute. Uh, you need to unmute yeah. yourself, and Maureen. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I second the motion, and I'd like to say a few words about Francis. Please do. Um, I've only known Francis since my last election in until Gate, and and he he was amazing. We worked together very very well to get the landslide, and uh, what a mayor we're going to have. I mean. Have we known of a mayor who's chasing bicycle thieves around town and catching them? And on the other hand, who works at the open house with the homeless? I mean, we cannot beat that. I'm so delighted to have Francis as a mayor, and I'm sure he's going to do a brilliant, brilliant job. Congratulations, Francis. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for the mayor's post? No. In that case, we don't need a vote on this one, Chris, do we? No, no Chair, we, we do. We need to formally move, make a vote. Okay. In that case, can we take a, I, I, I think it won't be a recorded vote individually. I thought it's still going to be a, a block vote. Yeah, Joe, would you like me to lead the vote? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. So if, before we start the, the vote, um, can I, I, I will seek if any members from the Conservative or Labour groups wish to not to vote independently rather than on the group vote, please indicate now. OK, no one's indicated. We will go to a straight vote. So Councillor Lamont. Councillor Lamont, on behalf of the Labour group, uh, with your 16 block votes, um, do you support the um, recommendation for Mayor? I do, and congratulations, Francis. Councillor Barrett, on behalf of the Conservative group, with your 17 block votes, uh, do you support Councillor the, the motion, the recommendation of Councillor Grider? No? I do. Councillor Councillor Fiveash. Um, uh, yeah, hi. Bye. Councillor Saddam. Hi, it's okay. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, the vote was thirty three four. No against and two abstent abstentions. The council, so you can announce the result is Council Guide right. Thank you very much. Uh, in that case, I declare Council Francis Guider has been. Well, I think just if I say that, uh, I would like to add a few words of my own to Council Guider. And I would say so that when I was elected mayor, he was the few 
few persons who actually came over and congratulated me and uh, provided me the support for throughout my mayor year. And not only that, he kept on running into me at some of the events that we were in there. So I think he's had a bit of experience in what it's like to be mayor. And I agree, I said, we'll make a good mayor. And I do congratulate you. Having said that, now I can quickly now say, Councillor, my supervisor has been elected as the mayor of Poli for 2020-2021. Please, can the mayor's chain be placed on Councillor Gaidra and that he reach out, then signs the expectation of acceptance of office. Congratulations. Well done, Francis. Congratulations, Francis. Oh, my dear. Councillor Lamb, I believe you want to say some words as Councillor Gardner is getting the mayoral chain. Yes, um, as uh, leader of the Labour Group, um, could I pass on my congratulations to Francis on becoming mayor? Um, so there seems to be a mic fail at the moment, but I'm making it hard to hear myself with. Um, I think anyone who read all the exchanges in local news would probably assume that we hate each other's guts. Um, that, that is certainly not the case. Uh, while it's true that we have areas where we quite profoundly disagree, uh, we do actually get on quite well. We've even been for a pint together in the past. Um, and no one could deny his commitment to uh, various community issues, certainly uh, on the campaign to save Crawley Open House, he was very supportive the whole way through. Uh, and of course, he's gone on to work for them directly. And I know uh, that that involvement in those range of community activities is exactly the sort of thing that we look for in, in mayors. So congratulations, Francis, on your year. We wish you well. Councillor Barrett. Yes, thank you. Can I also congratulate Francis on his um, election as Mayor of Crawley, um, a well-deserved accolade. I know he'll do an excellent job. Um, it's been said earlier, but one of the characteristics of all mayors that we've seen over the years has to be a huge commitment to the town of Crawley. And of course, Francis has this in abundance. He was born in the town. He's lived here almost ever since, other than a very short period when he, he lived in, in the US. Um, He's incredibly well known in the town. Um, you can't walk around the town with him without bumping into someone he knows. I will say, don't, don't ever try and have a conversation with him walking down the street because you'll always get interrupted by somebody coming the other way that he knows. Um, he is incredibly well known. He cares deeply for the town and its people. And I know that he wants to do a great job for the town where he was born and which means so much to him. I know he particularly wants to promote the town um, especially at the time of challenging economic circumstances. He understands um, the difficulties that Crawley and Crawley people are facing at the moment with the, um, the impact of COVID and the economic effect that that's going to have. And I know he wants to use his mail to promote the town as much as possible um, in these difficult times. He'll be a great ambassador for the town um, and a great ambassador for the council. Of course, it's always been said in the past as well, at mayor um, inaugurations that when you elect a mayor, you don't just elect a mayor, you elect a mayor's consort as well. And of course, Francis' consort will be his wife, Andrea, who um, most of you know Andrea, but if you don't, I can tell you she's very friendly, very outgoing, and together they make a great team. I know they'll do a great job for the town. It will be a different year, as everyone said. They will, they will do it in their own inimitable way and make it their own. I know they'll do an excellent job for Crawley. So congratulations again. Right. Well, the first thing I need to do is thank everybody for ele uh, excuse me, elevating me to this 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 truly um, honourable position of Mayor of Crawley. Um, <laughs> a fair few things have been said already. I, I I agree with Peter Lamb. First of all, Councillor Lamb, 
yes, uh, we do disagree on, on some things um, and we, we've often talked about it and it, it's about really how we get there, that we differ, but the goals of making lives better for people, um, they are uh, the goals that we that we generally share um, as councillors, and that's what every councillor, regardless of their party, um, should come into this for. Um, as I say, I, I'm humbled to have been made Mayor of Crawley. I, I was born here in 1975 at Crawley Hospital. Um, I am really proud of my hometown, um, and I plan to spend my time as Mayor promoting Crawley um, during this very difficult economic time. Uh, I plan to uh, promote Manor Royal as the, the premier business district in, in, in the country. Um, I plan to do whatever I can to promote Gatwick Airport. Um, and obviously all of that is, is to try and support and uh, promote jobs uh, during, as we all know, what is a tremendously difficult time for, for everybody. Um, it is true that, uh, and I would like to thank my wife, Andrea, for being such a fabulous and supportive person. Uh, my role as Tilgate councillor has taken a lot of energy um, out of me. And uh, you know, I tend to wonder sometimes, will I, will I run out? But I keep going and I'm really, really proud to have more uh, councillor Moy Mugali supporting me, uh, and obviously newly elected, and uh, councillor uh, Duncan Crow also very, very supportive. Um, I do want to mention as part of my speech, um, just a, just a, a quick mention for councillor Charles Jeffrey Petz, who, who did pass away a year ago today. So, um, and today is also my father, Dennis Guider's 75th birthday. So today is a day of very mixed emotions, but I am extremely proud and honoured to be uh, taking this, this role up, uh, on. My mayoral charity this year, which hopefully please um, uh, former Mayor Rashama is Manor Green School and College. My two twin, uh, twin stepsons attended that school and um, before they moved back to the US um, to live with their uh, father, one of the things they said, and I, coming from two lads with special educational needs, it's quite profound. Uh, it would be lovely if we could build a Manor Green in uh, Georgia, USA. Well, that was the regard that they, they held the school in. Um, they loved their time there. We are so lucky to have a school like Manor Green uh, in Crawley. And I understand from the, the, what I've been told that there are so many children out of area desperate to get a place there because it is so brilliant. So I look forward to working hard, um, helping to fundraise. And obviously I know that uh, COVID has created issues in terms of uh, uh, you know, the ability to fundraise. And, and uh, uh, Councillor Sharma is more than welcome to, to join me in, in trying to let's boost, boost those coffers. Beyond that, I think I've covered everything. Um, again, I'm truly honoured. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, I have to sign my declaration. That's true. That's true. Got to sign the declaration. I, Francis. James P.O. Guidera, having been elected to the office of Mayor of Crawley Borough Council, declare that I take office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gaitra. I think that has made up for my regrets of losing the few months. And as you know, I am so, so happy for what you said. I am a school governor there and I had intentions of doing certain events. We can do it jointly now. So thank you for choosing yes, that. And, and I'm sure. And I'm sure it'd be well appreciated. Thank you. Do they know? They do not, but they might know now. <laughs> I shall be speaking to the chair fairly soon, and I'm sure you'll be very, very pleased to know. Thank you, Francis. Appreciate it. Election with the deputy mayor. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, I now call for nominations for the Office of a Deputy Mayor for the Municipal Year 2020-2021. Councillor Lamb. Uh, thank you. I would like to move uh, Councillor Shahzad Malik uh, to be Deputy Mayor for the coming year. Um, I know that it is a it is a bitter sweet honour for him, having already uh, served diligently in that role for the last uh, year and being all set to take on the big job this year. Um, but that experience will certainly serve him well for the next the next ten months. Um, he is highly active in the community uh, and will continue to play a strong, a leading civic role uh, for the town if given uh, this second year in the role. Wait till you call me. Turn your mic back. Is this seconded? Um, yes. Go on. Go on, speak. Um, yes, I'm seconding that uh, Shazad's uh, uh, position. Did they hear me? Thank you, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Are there any other nominations? If not, I call for a vote on the election of the Deputy Mayor of Crawley for 2020-2021. Will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote? Before we seek the block vote, can I just check with any Labour or Conservative group members if they wish to vote individually or rather than the vote? No, under the block vote. Councillor London, um, please can you confirm how the, late, the 16 Labour block votes will be um, voting on this item? Yeah, uh, we're in favour of Councillor Malik as Deputy Mayor. Keep going, Shazad, your time will come. Councillor Burrow, can I ask how your, the 17 uh, Conservative block votes will be on this item? Uh, for Councillor Malik as Deputy Mayor. Councillor Fivash. Uh, yeah, for Councillor Manick. Finally, Councillor Sidan. Uh, for Councillor Malik. Mr. Mayor, that was you, unanimous um, for okay. Councillor Malik. Okay. Um, so, okay. Councillor Malik has been duly elected as Crawley's Deputy Mayor for 2021. I am looking forward to working closely with him during our mayoral year. And this is a time obviously for unity. And um, as we, I spoke with uh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Sharma just now, we will all be working very hard, hard to try and uh, make what we can out of this and promote our town and work together. So congratulations. I know. Okay. Um, I now call upon Mike, uh, Councillor Mike Pickett, who will propose a vote of thanks to the retiring uh, Mayor, Councillor Sharma, and his consort wife, uh, Bhavna. Councillor Pickett. Uh, thank you, Francis, and congratulations on your election as mayor. Um, uh, yes, I would second um, the uh, nomination for Councillor uh, Malik, and uh, um, uh, I hope uh, he will do a good job. Uh, Councillor Lamb, you'd like to speak. Thank you. I, I'm very happy to propose the uh, vote of thanks to the retiring mayor and uh, his consort, uh, Wagner. Um, over the last uh, year, I think he's served in the role diligently, and particularly when we look back at these last um, four months uh, or so, 
uh, which I guess is going to set the standard for what we're going to be experiencing in your term, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, of lockdown really, uh trying to find ways to uh, lead the civic community through all of that and to uh, motivate people through what has been a very um, difficult time. Um, this is, of course, Raj's second year that he served uh, as mayor and throughout the course of both terms, I think he's worked very hard to ensure that the whole host of uh, Crawley's communities uh, are do feel that they're involved in the decision making of this town, do feel that we're all one united community and I'm very grateful to him uh, for his efforts in, in that role. So thank you very much Raj uh, and uh, good luck on your next set of endeavours. Thank you Councillor Lamb. Um, Councillor Brenda Burgess I believe you are seconding the vote of thanks and saying a few words. Uh, yes thank you. Um, congratulations by the way. Um, yes this is uh, I would like to I'm honoured to say that few words I'm going to say I hope. Um, it was felt that a, a former mayor should have the honour of paying tribute to the outgoing mayor. So I'm really glad to say as a former mayor that honour has fallen to me. It is not easy being mayor. People think it's only one jolly after another, but we know it isn't. For one thing, you have to learn to survive on cake and, and biscuits. Seriously though, the job takes a lot out of you both physically and mentally. So Raj, it takes that out of your family too. And I know that your lovely wife has been by your side throughout. Councillor Sharma, Raj, you are one of the honoured few to have completed two years as mayor. You've worked hard in your role within the community. And although you re represent everyone, you've worked hard to engage with the BME community, which has been greatly appreciated. You have represented the Crawley people well, both at home and away. Indeed, you have been a worthy ambassador and I have been proud that such a person as yourself has been our representative, my representative. Raj, you've been open, warm, welcoming, approachable and not afraid to speak your mind. You replace the mayoral annual ball with a smaller, more informal and for me enjoyable event. And you even took on the job of updating the mayoral chain. So. You have certainly left your mark. Well done. Now I wish you and Bavna a restful time. Thank you for being our mayor. Thank you for being open, approachable and straight talking, a difficult thing to do in this day and age. Thank you for everyone, but most of all, thank you for being you. Now take it easy and put your feet up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burgess, Brenda Burgess. Um, are there any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Sharma. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Brenda. I think there are lovely words that you said. Yeah, definitely. I think you're probably right on in each and every council. I do speak my mind and I do work hard. And to me, cruelly, I wasn't born here. It wasn't my home, but I've made it my home. Probably been living here. I'm probably as as many as years you have, Francis. So, and but loving because I do twice as much with each and every community. I think I think to me. It's a wonderful job being able to speak the different languages, being able to engage and bring those communities more nearer to our town and to understand what unity, friendship, cohesiveness is. And I think I'm going to be working on that to even further promote that. And now that we have a colleague with something in common, Manor Green College, and I did have intention because I, I did feel that we lost out that I was going to be doing some event now we can do it together and hopefully raise lots and lots of money. Because one thing is for sure, ir irrespective of color, creed, religion, domi domination, Manor Green College does deserve everything they do. And the staff, they work very hard. We got a new head teacher in Tom Smith. He's a wonderful guy. And now having the new mayor carrying on my work, fantastic. Well done to you, sir. Hats off and we'll be doing it together. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Councillor Sharma. Completely agree with you. Um, we will be doing what we can to raise what money we can. Are there any other speakers that would like, like to come in?
OK, as there are no more speakers, normally at this point in the proceedings, uh, as the mayor, I would call up my predecessor, Councillor Sharma and his wife to receive their badges com uh, commemorating their past year in office. However, we are going to do this formally at the first non virtual full council meeting, hopefully later this year. Are there any other items of communications? OK, as there are no uh, no items of communications, uh, we will now deal with the uh, item seven notice of motion uh, before us this evening, which is set out on page 23 of the agenda. Notice of motion one motion of no confidence. This motion will be moved by Councillor Crow and seconded by Councillor McCarthy. Uh, I therefore call upon Councillor Crow to formally move the motion and present the motion. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor, and may I formally congratulate both you on your appointment as Mayor and also uh, Councillor Manick on his reappointment as Deputy Mayor for the upcoming year. We started um, tonight's meeting with, with a very sad event, um, having to pay tribute to the sad passing of Councillor Micro. We've had a happy event in the election of mayor and election of deputy, but now we have a, a serious um, event for tonight's um, uh, meeting. Um, I am, however, pleased to say that I will be formally withdrawing uh, this motion to council tonight, but I will just say a few words. Um, obviously, the, the situation that brought the, um, the motion being tabled was, was not of the Conservative group's um, doing. Um, however, um, events did unfold and we were invited to table a, a, a motion and um, I might just say a little bit flippantly that I wouldn't want to appear rude in, in not accepting an invitation, uh, but, but more seriously, um, this is a very, very serious um, business and um, I'm very pleased to say that both the groups at the Council have uh, reached an understanding and an agreement as to uh, the way forward. Now, now, don't get me wrong, I would very much like to lead a Conservative administration, but there, there are ways of doing it and there is the time of doing it. And certainly, I would like to lead a Conservative administration uh, by the ballot box and to have a majority. Um, what I do not want to do is replace one set of chaos with another set of chaos, which would have happened if there'd been no agreement and we had tried to force a minority Conservative administration. I think the people of Crawley want us to work together and certainly the reception that I have heard so far from, from the feedback is that people are pleased that we have arranged a deal because what we're doing, we're putting the people of Crawley and this town first, quite frankly. You know, it, it, it's well documented what's what's been going on over the last few months and the challenges that we face ahead in Crawley and I expect we'll hear a little bit more of that um, this, this evening. These really are a time to put politics aside. I could not think of a worse time for a new administration to take over in what it effectively is mid-year, but also not a majority administration. It really is, there could not be a worse time to, to change the administration. So I think the deal that both parties have agreed will work well for this council. It will ensure that we have stability and that our focus remains on the job in hand. And what a job that is, quite frankly, at the moment. That needs to be our only focus. No more um, punching through the politics for the rest of this council year. And when the election comes around next May, assuming it still takes place, then obviously the people of Crawley can decide who they wish to, to, to run their council. So the Conservative group are very pleased that we're withdrawing this motion. We're going to work constructively with the administration, always putting uh, Crawley first. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Crow, for those comments. And um, as this motion has now been withdrawn, there is no need for discussion or vote on the item. However, I will provide Councillor Lamb the opportunity to respond to Councillor Crow. Um, there will be no further speakers on this item. Uh, could I thank uh, Councillor Crow for withdrawing the motion and the sentiments uh, that he's expressed? Uh, much as he has said, the response that I've heard so far in relation to this been almost entirely positive, uh, certainly from sort of the general public expressing their views on it. We can't doubt that the year ahead of us uh, is going to be very tough. There are going to be some incredibly difficult decisions facing this council, and it is going to call on all of us to be our best selves. Those people who put themselves forward for election to the public last May, uh, well, May a year ago now, uh, committing that they would do what was in the best interest of the people of this town. Um, 
we will get through it somehow together. We will find a way past all these challenges and we'll be doing it as a unified council. So thank you very much uh, to Councillor Crow and I look forward to uh, this year of, of working together to address these tough problems. Thank you, Councillor Lamb, for your comments. Uh, we are now at item eight, a review of political proportionality, the allocation of sets to committees, the appointment of councillors to committees and to outside organ. Bear with me. <sighs> ah. Live TV. I'm so sorry, everybody. Right, let's do this properly. Uh, and item eight, the review of political proportionality, the allocation of seats to committees, the appointment of councillors to committees and to outside organisations, and proposed cabinet and their portfolio holder responsibilities for 2020 uh, I call upon Councillor Lamb to move the report of the Head of Legal and Democracy and HR, LDS 159, and the two recommendations. Uh, that have two parts to them. The report also includes Councillor Lamb's cabinet and their portfolio holder responsibilities. Councillor Lamb. Uh, thank you. As all these items have already been uh, agreed uh, as set out in the order paper, uh, I will simply move it without any further uh, ado. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. Um, Councillor Crow, I believe you are the seconder. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ye Mayor. Yes, very happy to, to second. Are there any other members wishing to speak on this report? Please indicate now. Councillor Sudan. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and uh, my congratulations to you. And I'm very pleased at the choice of your um, charity with the Manor Green School. I have a lot to do with that, and it's very, very worthwhile. Um, Thank you, Councillor Sir. I want to um, congratulate uh, both the leaders um, on coming to an agreement over this coalition and to say that um, I wish it well and I truly hope that it works for the benefit of the people of Crawley. Um, if that can happen, it will be worth some of the personal pain that events over the last month have caused. Back in at the start of the crisis, um, I emailed the leader, the then Peter Lamb, the leader, um, and copied to members of the group, and I suggested setting up an emergency committee that could include oppos opposition members. I was told there was no role for elected members in this kind of crisis, and that has been said more than once. For the record, I have in front of me the Local Government Association guidance that is very clear about the role of elected members during the COVID-19 outbreak. And I quote from it, councillor's role is to provide local leadership. Rather than become involved in the operational response led by officers, ward councillors will be among the people. Mr. Mr. Mayor, could I raise a point of order, please? And have an important role to play. Councillor, uh, we have to hear the point of order. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, just Councillor Crow, uh, Furnace Green. Go ahead, um, go ahead. It, this is agenda agenda item eight on the committee allocations, and I'm not quite sure where Councillor Sudan is going with this. This feels very much um, not related to agenda item eight. But obviously, it's, it's down to you, Mr. Mayor. But I'm just making my um, feelings known that this doesn't appear to be um, on topic. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to seek some advice. Thank you. Bear with us. I think it's very much on on topic, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sir. I'm just going. To, I am going. I'm just going to talk to the officers here briefly and see what they say.
OK, um, my advice that I've been given is as long as it relates to the report and the proportionality uh, in relation to memberships contained within the report, um, you can continue, but it must, it, it can't drift away. But if, if it does, then then you, then I ask that you ask a question during uh, the councillors um, uh, questions to uh, cabinet members and committee chairs and, and so on. Is that Councillor Sadat? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I think it does relate um, because what I want to say is that I'm pleased that I think we're going to have a bit more accountability and a bit more democracy. Um, Councillor Crow and, and yourself um, have talked about championing Crawley and um, how Crawley is going to need the support of all of us. And I think that we do need the input from all of the councillors, you know, as outlined in, in that guidance. And I, I see the way forward for that. You know, we, we've all got a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of expertise, a wealth of things to offer. And I hope, I really hope um, that through this arrangement, all of us, every single one of us, even the lowly independents, um, can actually work within this arrangement that's, that's been outlined um, so that we can really all give our best for the, the people of our town, because as has been said <coughs> before, they need us and they deserve that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sedan. Uh, let me let me clarify something. Um, every person who's elected, regardless of the party they represent, um, is legitimate and and has been sent to the council to represent the people that ticked a box for them. Um, nobody must feel that they are lowly or not um, relevant. And I can assure you that, uh, as we've spoken before. Um, all councillors will be involved and treated respectfully and uh, be engaged with um, during during this time. This is a time for a unity and for us to all work together. Um, and obviously, you know, if, if the Labour Party and the Conservative Party can come together, then, then I think that the independent councillors uh, will be very much involved. So, so please be assured. Okay. Uh, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Lamb, please formally move both recommendations 1A, 1B, and 2. And in doing so, you can use your right to reply. Uh, thank you. Um, in terms of my right to reply, that the points which have been raised do not appear to relate to the agenda and have been addressed separately elsewhere. Um, I would dispute them, but I formally move those recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. On to the voting. I'm going to deal with recommendation two first, as, th as this decision is to receive a note to the leader's cabinet function. This can be dealt with as a procedural matter and doesn't require a vote to be taken, and therefore um, that is agreed. We will now hold the vote on recommendation one, parts A and B, as set out in the supplementary agenda. Will the, uh, sorry, excuse me. Will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote? Can I check that no members from either Conservative or Labour wish to vote against uh, or vote independently rather than a uh, block vote before the vote commences? No, therefore, can I ask Councillor Lannan on behalf of the Labour Party? Councillor Lennon, can you confirm your 16 uh, block votes on the Labour Party um, in respect to recommendation 1A and B, please? Uh, all 16 votes are in favour of both 1A and 1B. Thank you, Raymond. Councillor Burroughs, can you confirm your 17 late, uh, Conservative votes um, on recommendations 1A and B, please? Uh, yes, all 17 in favour of 1A and 1B. That's a five ash on recommendations 1A and, five, um, one, 1A and 1B, please, your vote. Uh, I will abstain on 1A and 1B. Thank you. Councillor Sudan. I abstain on 1A and 1B. Mr Mayor, recommendations 1A and 1B are carried by 33 votes, no objections and two abstentions. Thank you very much. Uh, now we move on to item nine, which is public questions. Um, 
The next item is public question time, and we have 30 minutes for this redesigned item. As we are unable to take uh, verbal public questions, we now accept written public questions in advance, and we have received one which is contained um, in the order paper. I ask the Democratic Services Officer to read out the submitted public question and then invite Councillor Peter Smith as the Cabinet Member for Planning and Economic Development to respond. A written copy of of the response will be sent to the member of the public who submitted the question. A question has been received from Mr Simons of the Eiffel Society. It has been said unity does not mean sameness, it means oneness of purpose. It is in that spirit of unity I ask this question. At the end of last year, it was reported this council did not support Home England's three billion master plan for 10,000 houses west of Ifield. Can this council confirm they still do not support Homes England's master plan, even though they have allowed this developer to establish an office within the town hall? End of question. Thank you. And Councillor Peter Smith to respond, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. May I congratulate you on your new appointment and wish you particularly well in fundraising for Manor Green School in my ward. And I'll do what I can thank to you very much. that. Um, I'd like to thank Mr Simons for his uh, question. I think that um, it's clear that the council is not supporting at this time the Homes England's proposals in as much as we know them. We are, as a planning authority, talking to Homes England to try to understand their proposals as part of preparing our local plan, but the council itself does not support the proposals in as much as we understand them. Um, rent, renting space in the town hall to other organisations is, of course, a way of helping to pay our bills and a way to uh, avoid having to make cuts when we're faced with a two million shortfall in our budget in 2021. Um, all the rent we can get from the uh, commercial properties that we own goes towards that and reduces the amount of money that we need from the taxpayer. So the two things are completely separate. We um, have given a lease to Homes England to occupy a space in the town hall, town hall. It does in no way affect any decision we will make in either the forward planning or the development management of the local plan and planning in Crawley. And it does not influence our position on any proposals that Homes England may make west of Ifield or any other proposals for that matter. They're completely separate. I hope that's um, helpful, Mr. Simons, and thank you very much for raising this interesting question. Thank you, uh, Councillor Peter Smith. And with no further questions, I will end the public question time. Item 10, consideration of full council recommendations and call in decisions. There are four recommendations remaining before the Council and we will take them in order uh, in the order that they are listed on page three of the agenda. Before we turn to recommendation three, appointment of interim monitoring officer, I need to ask the Democratic Services Manager to depart from supporting this meeting for this item and invite a Democratic Services Officer to take over. Please. I'm just waiting for that person to leave the room before we can continue. OK. Now on to recommendation three, appointment of interim monitoring officer as detailed on page 25 of the agenda. Uh, Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Thank you. And uh, I'm not sure if it's gone live to me yet. I'm afraid it seems, it seems to be focusing on you. It, oh, hang on a second. There we go. Brilliant. Maybe it thinks to the head there's something in common. Um, and we should probably take a moment to, to remember this is the first ever sort of broadcast 
um, full, full council meeting that the council has had. Uh, so just to put that into context for anyone who is watching or is catching up on YouTube, uh, this report is about uh, the monitoring officer, which is the role, it's one of the top three roles at the council in terms of the, the full-time employees the council has. Uh, they're responsible for ensuring that the council behaves legally. Uh, and we are in being asked to uh, decide who the temporary appointment uh, to that role should be, which is Chris, who you have seen a number of times uh, on today's broadcast. He's the manager of the Democratic Services team, uh, who I'm very happy to support being put in that, that temporary role um, and to take uh, such measures as are necessary to modify the constitution because it is a named role in the constitution. But of course, the only reason why Chris is able uh, to do that role is because our current monitoring officer who's been with the council many years, Anne Maria Brown is stepping down. Um, and I, I don't know, Mayor, if, Mr. Mayor, if you're coordinating it, but um, we, we need to offer our thanks to her because of course she uh, will not be with us at the time of the next um, full council meeting. Uh, she's leaving on the 1st of October. And we very much want to thank her for all the many years uh, worth of service that she has done to this council. Thank you, Councillor Lamb. And, and yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. So yes. Uh, Councillor Crow, I believe you are seconding. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. May. Yes, and I think with, with my full head of hair, I won't be conf uh, confused with yourself and the leader. Um, yes, I'm very pleased to um, second this uh, recommendation. As Councillor Lamb has explained, it is something that we do need to do so that we have somebody in place on a, on a temporary um, uh, basis. I, the Conservative group will be supporting this uh, recommendation, and I too. Uh, would just like to pay tribute to the head of legal, uh, democratic and human resources um, for her service to this council. Um, I think she's been here um, certainly longer than me. She certainly seems to have been around a, an awful long time as, and as an individual member and as a group leader. I've certainly always found her very helpful and very professional in any query that I've ever taken to her. And she won't be with us at our next full council, but she will be here. Uh, and with us until September. So on behalf of the Conservative Group, I'd just like to join the leader in thanking her for her service at, um, at Crawley Borough Council. And uh, if we are virtual at our next meeting, I'm sure she'll be uh, tuning in. So I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Crow. Thank you very much. I'll comment on the hair. But yes, thank you very, thank much. very much. Um, uh, are there any speakers that I would like to come in? Um, Maria, you'd like to come in? Yes, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, um, thank you for the kind words given uh, by Councillor Lamb and Councillor Crow. Um, I've been I've been very fortunate and feel very privileged to to have worked at Crawley for uh, nearly seventeen years. Um, I've worked for both uh, political administrations, and in that role. Um, I've had a number of wonderful opportunities. Um, yes, there's been uh, challenges in undertaking the role of the uh, of the monitoring officer. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm really, you know, grateful that I've I've worked at the council and seen the council and the town prosper um, so greatly um, in that time, especially for the community that we all um, that we all serve. Um, I also need to give a, a big thank you to some incredible work colleagues that I have and particularly uh, the work colleagues uh, in my teams, notably democratic services, legal services, the elections team, HR and corporate support. Um, and also, I, th I think I would like to uh, pay my personal thanks to uh, to Chris Pedlow uh, and to the Democratic Services team, particularly in terms of the hard work um, that they have given to this organisation, particularly in terms of delivering these uh, remote meetings. And I think they've done a fantastic job. And finally, to end, um, I give my thanks to um, Natalie Brahma Pearl, the chief executive, and to the uh, senior management team that have provided support, guidance, and encouragement to me in this role. So thank you very much, everybody.
behalf of the council, I'd like to present you with a oh, lovely bouquet of flowers. Thank um, you very much. <laughs> I'd like to thank you personally for all of the, the help that you've offered to me. Um, Thank you. Uh, again, we're getting to grips with all of this. Um, I would like to express uh, my personal gratitude to Emery for all the five years I've been here at the council. She's been uh, extremely helpful, very important part of uh, my my work. Without her, uh, she is the person that I go to for advice on the very complex and technical matters. And um, I know that she's been doing this for, for far longer than I have. Um, it, it will be very hard to find somebody to uh, to fill her shoes, as they say, and uh, we are all extremely grateful for the service that she has provided to all councillors um, through the years. So thank you very, very much, Henry Brown. Councillor Mullins, you'd like to come in and speak, yes? <laughs> thank you, Councillor Mullins. Just unmute your mic here. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking for the little hand, which I think I started out with, but it seems to have gone now. So it's hard to know what to do when you can't find your little hand, isn't it? But um, um, I would like to wish Emery all, all the very best. I mean, she did help me at one stage with um, some personal problems, and I, I didn't forget that. I only wish that we could have got together and had the normal going away drink together and 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 chats and and um that we could have done it in the way we've done it traditionally but i do feel as though i want to say uh, all the best to her um retirement is something you i don't think you end up regretting I, I i certainly didn't it's something you learn to enjoy and it becomes a new way of living and i'm sure emory will find uh, that when she settled down into a new life um she will miss the company that she used to have, the people she used to see and know, but uh, the stress and strains of going to work every day will be gone from her and that she will enjoy. So very best to you, Marie. All the best from me. Thank you, Councillor Mullins. Thank you. Uh, P uh, Councillor Lamb, would you like to, to come in? And to, to finish off the, the formal bit of the, the report, Having already passed on my, my thanks to, to Anne-Marie. Yes. yes, please. Uh, well, yes, if, I, if, yes. I, if, I, if I can formally move it, because we do actually have to agree this report, otherwise the council will be we at, without a top legal officer. Um, well, with a top with a monitoring officer. Um, so I formally move it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lamb. Yes. Yeah. Um, we will now hold the vote on recommendation three, appointment of interim monitoring officer. So uh, will the Democratic Services Officer please conduct the vote? So I am. Apologies. Uh, before I seek the uh, block vote, can I just check if there are any um, members, uh, either the Labour or Conservative groups, wishing to vote independently rather than the block vote? Please indicate now. No. OK, in that case, can I ask Councillor Lunnan to provide the Labour uh, 16 block votes, please? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I can confirm that Labour will be voting in support of this. And can I just say also, I fully support the words that have been said about Amoria, and I'm sure that when we see in future the public view count on the governance committee go up to one, we'll know who it is who's watching it in her happy retirement, not able to get away from the local government. Uh, but yeah, Labour are fully in support of the report. Um, and Councillor Barrett, can you provide the Conservatives 16 block votes, please? Um, yes, thank you, Heather. Can, um, our, our 17 block votes uh, will be in favour of recommendation three. And can I also second what Councillor Lunnan said about Anne-Maria Brown, who I've known throughout the time she's worked for Borley Borough Council and she's done a brilliant job. And Councillor Fybash, can you cast your vote, please? Uh, yeah, well, I'm for, and I'd like to echo what everybody else said about Anne-Maria. She's brilliant. Thanks. 
And Councillor Sudan, can you cast your vote for recommendation three, please? Yes, I'm for recommendation three, and I too will miss Anne Maria Brown and wish her the, all of the very best. Thank you very much, um, Mayor. That's uh, unanimous. That's been approved. Thank you very much. Um, please invite the Democratic Services Manager back to the meeting. Right, OK, um, on to recommendation for budget monitoring, quarter four, cabinet held on the 24th of June 2020, page 73. Uh, Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the, the recommendation post here is to do with the business rates equalisation reserve. Uh, which is the way in which we collect uh, more in some years versus other years than business rates and it's intended to smooth out the process um, of collection uh, but i should alert members that the, the business rates equalization reserve is while well, it's being topped up now retroactively um, in future years it is likely that we're going to be collecting significantly less in business rates and that will have a significant impact upon the finances of this council moving forward uh, for the indefinite future um, so I'd like to propose that that movement as recommended by the council's financial officers. Thank you, uh, Councillor Lamb. Uh, Councillor Peter Smith, I believe you are seconding. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I formally second recommendation four. Thank you, Councillor. Sorry. Uh, Councillor Crow, please come in. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. The Conservative Group will be supporting this uh, recommendation, and I, I echo the comments of, of Councillor Lamb of the challenges that we face ahead in terms of the um, both the collection and the amount of uh, business rates that we will be uh, receiving, and uh, it will be a significant challenge for this council. It's uh, it's one of the key drivers as to why we're going to be working. Um, are there any other speakers? Nope. OK, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Lamb, please formally move the adoption of recommendation four. Aye. Is it going to go live? I formally move the adoption of recommendation four. Thank you. We will now hold the vote on recommendation for budget monitoring quarter four from the cabinet held on the 24th of June 2020, page 73. Will the Democratic Services Manager please conduct the vote? Can I just check with um, Labour and Conservative um, members if anyone wishes to go uh, vote independently on, or, or through the block vote? Please indicate now. No, the Councillor Lannan, please can you indicate your uh, the late 16 block votes for recommendation four? Yep, Labour in favour of recommendation four. Councillor Barrett, can you provide the Conservative block vote on recommendation four? We're muted. Sorry, um, yes, our 17 votes are cast in favour of recommendation four. Councillor Fivash. Yeah, uh, for recommendation four. And finally, Councillor Sudan. For recommendation four. Mr Mayor, recommendation four was passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Now on to recommendation five, the HRA budget for purchase of land or property from the Cabinet held on the 24th of June 2020, page 82 in the agenda. Councillor Lamb, please introduce the recommendation. Thank you. Um, this is probably the only sort of substantive decision we, we're having to take tonight around policy, which is a proposal that we uh, provide greater flexibility to the council's officers in consultation with cabinet members to purchase uh, dwellings or land 
Um, in terms of Crawley Homes, we often find ourselves being pipped to the post as we try to uh, purchase parcels of land or try to buy uh, buildings that we could use for uh, affordable housing in Crawley. Uh, and so the proposal is to give a greater ability to those officers to go out and to put those bids in so that we can hopefully uh, deliver more affordable housing for our people. Councillor Peter Smith, I believe you are seconding. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, it's particularly important that the Council has this flexibility in what is ever a faster changing world and given the circumstances around COVID-19 and the economic impact on our town. So yes, I, I second the motion. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Are there any other speakers? Yep, Councillor Crow. Thank you, Mr Mayor. The, um, the Conservative Group will be supporting uh, Recommendation 5. Echo the comments of both Councillors Lamb and Smith that this, this enables the Council to have the flexibility to be able to uh, invest in, in new homes on, on more sites potentially. So it's um, having that tool at the disposal of the Council is, is very welcome. Thank you, Councillor Crow. Are there any other speakers? OK, as there are no further speakers, Councillor Lamb, please formally move the adoption of Recommendation 5. Uh, I formally move the adoption. Thank you. We will now hold the... Okay. Okay, technical glitch there. We will now hold the vote on recommendation five, HRA budget for purchase of land or property from the cabinet held on 24th of June, 2020, page 82 in the agenda. Will the democratic services manager please conduct the vote? Please can I just check with all Labour and Conservative members that no one wants to vote um, individually rather than through the group vote? No. Councillor Lunnan, please can confirm for recommendation five, um, how the Labour 16 block votes will go. Labour are in favour of recommendation five. Councillor Barra, please confirm the, the 17 Conservative block votes in recommendation five. Um, again, the Conservative group will be voting in favour of recommendation five. Councillor Five Ash, recommendation five, you will vote please. Uh, yeah, four, recommendation five. Finally, can I sit down. Your vote on recommendation five. Uh, for recommendation five. Mr. Mayor, that's a unanimous vote in support of recommendation five. Thank you very much, everybody. And finally, on to recommendation six decisions taken under emergency urgency powers from the governance committee held on the 6th of July 2020, page 82, in the first of the supplementary agendas. Councillor Lunnan, please introduce the recommendation. Well, nothing like being unprepared, and I'm really unprepared. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this report has been brought forward to the Governance Committee to underline how we moved as a council through the COVID crisis and what powers the Chief Executive took upon herself with the support of both the leader of the council and the leader of the opposition and also the mayor and the deputy mayor at the time to be able to do what was necessary to get the town through the worst of the crisis. Um, since we've now moved on to um, digital meetings, um, most of the powers that we use can now be returned through their respective committees, but we do also leave a caveat in there that allows chief executive to take the powers again as necessary if, if something bad happened again again but in correspondence with both the leader of the council the leader of the opposition and the chair and deputy chair of the governance committee um clearly it's been an unprecedented time um so what the leader had to, what the chief executive had to do um was unprecedented uh, sort of as we all keep saying but now things are starting to return back to whatever this new normal is we should be able to um Get back to work doing our best for the town. So I formally move the report 
uh, the recommendation six. Thank you. And Councillor Burrett, you'd like to speak? Uh, well, thank you, Mr Mayor. I just wanted to my second. Apologies, my apologies. My so apologies. You would like to second this? I, I, um, yeah, I would, I would just like to uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to second the recommendation. Um, but in doing so, I would also like to, to um, give the Conservative group thanks to the Chief Executive and all our officers for all the, uh, the work they did over and above um, call of duty to, um, to steer the council and the town through um, the early parts of the, uh, the COVID crisis, which um, clearly was unprecedented and involved a huge amount of work on everyone's part. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burrett. Are there any other speakers? OK, as there are no further speakers, I would um, before I invite Councillor Lannan. OK, OK, as there are no further speakers. I invite Councillor Lannan to please formally move the adoption of recommendation six. Uh, I formally move the adoption of recommendation six. I just hope we're going to get the votes for it. <laughs> Thank you. We will now hold the vote on recommendation six. Decisions taken under emergency urgency powers from the governance committee held on the 6th of July 2020. Will the democratic services manager please conduct the vote? Can I just check with any Labour or Conservative members if they wish to um, vote independently or happy with the um, otherwise are happy to be voting through the block vote? No members, so I'll bring Councillor Lannan to present the Labour 16 block votes on the recommendation. Yep, Labour fully supported the motion. They thought the Speaker did a very good job convincing them. And I'd just like to take uh, this opportunity to wish the new Chair of Governance luck for the next year. Councillor Barrow, can you pre present the 16 Conservative votes, please? Uh, no, I'll present the 17. 17, sorry. <laughs> May. Um, yes, I'm happy, happy to present those uh, in favour of the recommendation. And can I thank Councillor Lunner for his comments? And I look forward to working with him um, as Vice Chair of the um, committee over the coming year. Councillor Five Ash, can you present your vote, please, on the recommendation six? Uh, yes, fine. Four, recommendation six. Thank you. And Councillor Sudan? Uh, for recommendation six. Chair, that was unanimous in support of recommendation six. Uh, thank you, everybody. And now on to item 11, councillors question time. The next item on the agenda is councillors question time, and we have 30, 30 minutes for this redesigned item. We will start with uh, noting the written questions submitted by Councillor Eid as detailed in the supplementary agenda, which includes the Cabinet Member for Housing, Councillor Irvine's response. Councillor Eid, do you, uh, do you wish to ask a supplementary question or ask a further question on the map? No, I just wanted to wish to thank them for the response. Um, it was very inclusive and gave more details than I asked for, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Eid. Uh, Cabinet Member Irvine to respond. Um, thank you for the well, thank you, and uh, I'm glad you got the information you, you wanted. Thank you, Councillor Irvine. I'll now open the floor to any members wishing to ask a question to either any Cabinet Member or Committee Chair, but not to any newly appointed Committee Chairs. Councillor Crow. Councillor Crow. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I had trouble unmuting because somebody else's box appeared over my microphone and I couldn't uh, get to it. Uh, uh, my question is to Councillor Peter Smith, the Cabinet Member for Planning and Economic uh, Development. It's it is very good to see that the, the market is, is up and running again. Um, in its current location, and indeed, it's really been really good to see the reopening of the town centre. Um, but what I would like to ask is, um, given that the works to Queensway are are now done, um, is he able to let us know when the uh, the market will be moving to its new planned uh, location? And also, a second part of this question, if I could be so cheeky, um, does he know um, 
to, uh, the, the council is currently the um, uh, the the um, runs the market is currently, and I forget the term of it, but the council is currently the operator of the market. Um, how long is that arrangement likely to continue for? Councillor Smith. Thank you, Councillor Crow, for your question. Um, you're, you're quite right. We've designed both the Queensway and the pavement to be the long term permanent location for a market. Um, and, and that includes installing facilities and infrastructure under the paving for water and power and to have a, a market that complements the shopping offer in that area and actually works for both the shops in the retail units adjacent, but also for the market so they can have complementary offerings. Um, we do recognise, however, that the market as we operate it at the moment, you're quite right, the Borough Council operates it directly. Um, we recognise that this is just a temporary arrangement. We, we put that together because the previous arrangements, the previous operator basically took money from the storeholders uh, and delivered very little for it. And we have been running the market on this fairly ad hoc basis for several years now. Um, and this was particularly due initially to the hard work of uh, Alfredo Mendes, who met many of you will know has now retired from the council. Um, partly, I think, due to ill health. So I do wish him well if he's listening. I'm sure he's listening and uh, thank him for all his work. Now, the, the question about when are we going to launch the market in the new location is an interesting one because clearly we've invested a lot of time and effort in the infrastructure to support uh, a long term solution to the market, to have a quality market that works within our retail environment, as I've just explained. And we therefore need to have a proper funding behind that in order to set it up, to decide on the method of operation. Personally, I'm hoping that we'll be able to arrange a community interest company, or ideally a cooperative to run it, but no decisions have been made. Uh, probably we'll be discussing them together, I hope, Duncan. Um, but the most important thing is to find some money in the budget to pay for the launch and to, to get the market going successfully. The last thing we want to do is let um, units and operators dribble in there in an uncoordinated way and have a sort of half-baked uh, launch. So how long is a piece of string? Um, it depends on we can find the money. If we can find the money, we'll do it as soon as we can, but I suspect that we aren't going to be able to find the money in the immediate future. I hope that's answered your question. Councillor Crow, do you have a supplementary question? Um, well, I'd just like to thank uh, the Cabinet Member Peter Smith for the uh, the answer, which was quite quite a, a comprehensive answer, though recognising that um, it, we were just not able to specify. But uh, yes, very much look forward to sort of um, uh, discussing this in the future and hoping that uh, we can get a successful market running in the location that we planned for um, that has been uh, adopted for. I wasn't aware there was going to be an additional cost. But um, just really, if the, the cabinet member can keep members informed, um, I'll be very grateful. Um, can I res respond, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Uh, yes, of course. Um, thank you, Duncan. Yes, of course, I'll include uh, and consult with members. That's what we do on the Economic Regeneration Working Group, which we've done since I became cabinet member, and I certainly can commit to do that. Um, and, and the cost will be around launch costs, setting up the, the procedures for that, the publicity, etc. So, yes, unfortunately, very little in life is cost free. Thank you, Councillor uh, Peter Smith. I, I'd just like to echo your remarks uh, about Alfredo Mendes. I wish him well. He, uh, I used to have a lot of conversations with him about Townsend stuff, and he was a fabulous um, Council officer, and I do wish him well. Councillor Tina Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a question for Cabinet Member uh, Peter Smith. Um, sadly, the number of cases of COVID 19 have, have risen in Crawley. So, are you happy with 
the Crawley Borough Council has done everything possible to ensure that residents practice social distancing, particularly in Queen Square. Also, is there anything that all members could do to assist in promoting uh, social distancing, please? I proceed, Mayor. Yes, sorry, my apologies. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Councillor Tina Belvin, for your query. I think it, you raised a very good point. We have um, increasing footfall in the square following national government announcements. Um, we have quite a few comments on social media and other media regarding people's behaviour in general, actually. Um, and it's very difficult to find or, or, or to say in an absolute way what is right or wrong, particularly when we've seen government announcements on a Sunday with, uh, for activities that are allowed to take place within 24 hours in some cases. Um, however, having said all that, um, we in the economic development team led by Clem Smith have hired consultants, uh, the same guys that advise us on the, um, the new market, as a matter of fact, around the processes and procedures to put in place for to encourage social distancing and to support, most importantly, to support our businesses ac across the whole of the, of the town centre and, and in the county mall. Um, so they installed all the signage you see um, and improved signs uh, over the top of our monuments using our, our branding. They've put these footfall signs and direction signs on the ground. They've produced guidance for all of the store operators. They've worked with the, um, the manager of County Moore, Simon Cuckoo, uh, and others, and, and, and much more. And, and that's in a team of, I think, two and a half full-time equivalents. Uh, with all the rest of it that's been going on. So it, it's a tough call to to impose and police regulations that are, are fairly loose. Um, I think it's been reasonably successful. Um, I think that the whole situation around masks is going to open up a, a, another can of worms. Having said that, are very very few people seem to be wearing them and the, the numbers have been dropping as I think We've all um, gained a perception that the whole thing's over and we're all back to business as usual. It's not like that. Um, the officers and the council have been enforcing government policy to the best of our ability and within the funding uh, available to us. And in fact, we've spent considerably more than the government allocated to, to do all these activities. So uh, happiness, yeah, that's a... a a state of mind at a particular moment, I think, yeah, it could be better, it could be worse, but our officers have done a great job. I'd like to congratulate them and I'd like to encourage our public to uh, to visit our shops, but to recognise proper social distancing. Uh, personally, I've been wearing a mask right since the, the crisis started when I'm near other people. It's in the interests of the other people, not just yourself, and I'd recommend everybody to do that immediately. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peter Smith, uh, for that comprehensive answer, and I agree with your last comments there. Um, Councillor Belvin, would you like a, uh, a supplementary question? Um, yes, I, I would just like to add that it's good that we're allowing some of the, the retailers to obviously put uh, cordons out so people can queue, um, which is great, but unfortunately, you know, some pedestrians still walk very close to to those queues. Um, I, I just don't know how we can get it out there, get the message out there, how important it is that we all fight this together. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Belwin. Councillor Pendlington. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is also, I'm afraid, for Councillor Peter Smith. Sorry, you're having a bit of an evening of it. 
And this one is about the pedestrian connection between the Queensway, Queenscape Square bit of the town centre and the Memorial Gardens. And while it's been upgraded and that's brilliant, it's still not really providing a desperately safe and clear right of way for pedestrians there. Cars still drive too fast. Just wondering on your thoughts on whether anything more could actually be done to make it safer, perhaps some Belisha beacons or something to warn people that pedestrians are likely to be coming through there because at the moment they're just ploughing through and not really uh, thinking BBC. about it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Pendington, your, for your question. I hadn't realised I was so popular. I'm really honoured to have three interesting questions tonight. Um, yes, I think that this project we've done there in the Queensway, particularly at the Memorial Gardens, uh, the pavement interchange, has um, it, it had some fairly risky elements to it. One was to reduce the hedge and so to blend, I call it blending the two areas together. And the second was to make the uh, the, the road part of the scheme a, a shared space. And, and, and the whole point about that is that it is a shared space. So as vehicles enter from um, College Road, they have to go up a little ramp. The, the texture of the paving and the colour of the paving changes and right the way as you go along you see more people moving across that space. Um, we need to recognise as well that there are very low volumes of traffic down there. There's a, the small, a fairly small car park at the end and my own personal experience is that most people have been uh, recognising that this is a shared space and have automatically been driving at a very cautious speed, which is what any responsible driver would do, and have also recognised actually the priority that should be given to pedestrians, to people with their children and their pushchairs that are walking to and from the mall and the memorial gardens, etc. Um, the, th the thing that is not working successfully at the moment is that vehicles and I've uh, taken quite a few photographs of them, have, have been coming to a halt across the road from Sainsbury's and the British Heart Foundation, and they've been parking these sometimes very large vehicles on the pavement, with two wheels on the pavement, which of course is both illegal and also damages our brand new infrastructure. And I was particularly saddened to see a police vehicle parked there the other day but I'm, I, I raised that as an issue and have been advised that the police are allowed to park in such a way if it's they're on an operational matter. And I think they were probably getting their sandwiches for lunch, but that's by the by. We do need to encourage our community to, to respect the considerable investment we've made in our town. That applies right across the town centre. Uh, we are continually looking for ways to try and help people to desist from spilling their coffee on the paving and worst of all dropping their chewing gum. We will be doing more publicity to recognise the, sh the shared area, the shared space and encourage people to, to, to recognise it more generally but we wanted to let it all bed down first. We don't want masses of ugly signs and double yellows and all that other uh, stuff that we could do. We want to keep it nice and welcoming to our, our residents and our visitors. And I, and I think it's pretty much universally uh, popular, in, certainly in the contacts I've had. With you. Thank you very much for your question, Councillor Peddington. Uh, would you like a supplementary question, Councillor Peddington? No, I'm fine. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. Aid. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is for Councillor Peter Smith. Um, there has been a vacant shop in the Furnished Green Parade for some months. Is it likely to be let soon by the council or will it continue to be vacant for the rest of the year? I'm not, I'm not being called. Uh, Councillor Smith. 
Thank you. Uh, maybe I should be offering people green shield stamps or something. I really <laughs> thank you, Councillor Eath, for remembering what green shield stamps are. But, um, also for your question, um, I, I I absolutely don't know the answer to that. I don't get uh, frequent updates. I do know that at the the um, OSC scrutiny panel meeting, um, the officers did update the scrutiny panel that there's only one vacant unit in our um, property, or our asset register. And I was actually cycling past Furnish Green today, as I do frequently, and uh, the, the, the Graves Jenkins sign in the window actually says under offer now. So I hope that's correct and not some uh, marketing tactic on their part. Um, I'll be happy to find out the current status and let you know, and I'll do that after this meeting. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Eid, do you need, would you like a supplementary question? Uh, no, that's fine. Thank you. He's already said he's going to respond to me, so I look forward to his response. And thank, thank you, you. Councillor Eid. Councillor Brenda Burgess, please. <clears throat> thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have a question not for Councillor Smith, but for Councillor Mullins. Um, Councillor Mullins, if you remember last at the last meeting, I asked you for information about the loss of the green flag, and I have got the information, and I do thank you for that. Um, as you know, the uh, Memorial Gardens lost their green flag due to circumstances at the time, and it looks like going forward, um, specialisms involved in the management plans, applications and assessments, and the plans uh, have been reviewed and refreshed, as you know, and the management template has been altered to reflect the green flag criteria. So my question is, uh, with this and the present crisis in mind, how hopeful are you that the Memorial Gardens will get a green flag in the near future, say 2021? Thank you. Councillor Mullins. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I mean, I've always been so um, delighted when I've gone to um, events with our staff. Also a little guilty to some extent because I'll go there as a portfolio holder to help them receive these honours when I know very well that it's those staff that have done all the work um, by, by their toil. And, and, and that is something we must never ever forget when we receive awards that um, people like us sit on our nice velvet seats and, and and receive these things on behalf of the town council but they're really we're receiving them on behalf of those workers that are out there in the wind and the rain and sometimes the sun which can be too much as well um so i, I mean I, I always like to think before um i answer questions like this about the staff and the gratefulness that i've got to the staff that have not only done an ongoing excellent job but through this crisis this coronavirus crisis have really pulled the stops out and got a gun and done whatever management have asked them to do and they've been absolutely wonderful sorry if i'm abusing the question but i just felt that i wanted to say that as an opportunity came up um yes of course i want to see us go back and win the green flag again we've consistently won it in the past there's absolutely no reason why we can't win it again. Um, and just at the moment, we just don't quite know how things are going to pan out. But uh, yeah, my ambition is always to take these honours for the staff because it's those people that deserve them. And it's great to have the name of the town put on the map. So thank you for the question. Thank you, Councillor Mullins. Uh, Councillor Burgess, do you have a, a, a supplementary question? Uh, yes, really. It's not so much a question as I agree totally with what you say, Councillor Mullins. We have the most amazing staff um, at, at Crawley, and I think the um, people that do the gardens and the parks are exceptional. I think they've got, they've got our town looking good again. I know that during the COVID height, it, you know, they've been doing it elsewhere, um, and I, I'm with you all the way. They need our thanks and any anything that we get any awards to get really are for them so thank you mm -hmm. i don't need to answer that i just agree with it okay i'd like to say something too actually i think the work that's been done in the memorial gardens is absolutely fabulous the the wildflowers and the flowers that are coming up now they just look stunning um so it is brilliant um thank you anyway thank you 
Are there any further uh, members with a question at all? No. Nope. OK, that uh, brings to the end um, the uh, question time. And on to item 12, minutes of the Cabinet Overview and Scrutiny Commission and Committees. I call upon the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Malik, to move the receipt of the reports of the meeting that are set out in agenda item 12, uh, minute uh, point one. Uh, this is a procedural item and therefore a full vote is not required. Deputy Mayor Malik. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the reports of the Planning, Governance Committees, Overview and Scrutiny Commission and Cabinet be received. Is that agreed? Agreed. That is agreed. 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 Thank you. Agreed. 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 We, we all agreed, yes. Agreed. <laughs> I think I think we're agreed, Mayor. I think so. Agreed. I, think so. I agree as well, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. OK, we'll your well, stamps. that is agreed. Um, right, so there are no supplementary items of business, so I can declare the meeting of the Council now closed. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.